the Middle Ages often get a bad reputation because of some controversial and downright bizarre events that took place during these times, but on several occasions, it produced some of humanity's greatest breakthroughs. Come along in this video as we take a look at 10 trailblazing inventions during the Middle Ages that set the tone for humanity's progress for centuries to come. There was no reliable and accessible method of calculating time prior to the High Middle Ages. People had to rely on either natural phenomena, like the sun's movements, or tools, like the hourglass, or calibrated candles. The first mechanical clocks weren't created until the 14th century thanks to advancements in church bell ringing technology. The first of these was originally used in a cathedral in Padua in 1344. Clocks started to advance in accuracy, sophistication, and compactness during the ensuing decades and centuries. These clocks gave rise to pocket watches over time, and more recently, wrist watches. The printing press has come to be regarded as one of the most important innovations of our time. It had a significant impact on how society evolved. Johann Gutenberg, a German, was frantic to find a way to gain money in the late 1430s. There was a tradition at the time of attaching miniature mirrors to one's hat or clothes to absorb healing energies when visiting holy locations or images. The mirrors themselves were insignificant, but Gutenberg discreetly observed how profitable it was to produce large quantities of low-cost product. People invented a very crude kind of printing around the 1300s and 1400s. It entailed cutting letters or images from blocks of wood. The ink-soaked block would be stamped onto paper. Gutenberg had previously worked at a mint and understood that if he could employ cut blocks within a machine, he could greatly speed up the printing process. Even better, he'd be able to reproduce text in large quantities. That is how the printing press came about. Trust us when we say our next invention is very explosive. But before we blow your mind, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on the bell notifications so you never miss an upload. Gunpowder, as it became called, is a compound composed of saltpeter, potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal. These materials, when combined, will burn quickly and explode as a propellant. During their search for the life extension elixir in the 9th century CE, Chinese monks found the technology. The essential element, saltpeter, had been used for therapeutic purposes by the same culture from the late centuries BCE. It was then discovered to be incendiary and was promptly used in combat. The Mongols quickly evolved into an ambitious and ruthless society, and their conquest and invasions served as means for gunpowder to spread over the world. It was reported that the technology had reached the Middle East by the 13th century CE, where it would have come in touch with traders as well as crusaders. The first practical windmills were built in a region covering eastern Iran and western Afghanistan during the 9th century. They are described in a text by Estakri, a Persian geographer at the time, as having horizontal sails similar to helicopter blades that are directly attached to the millstones spinning below by a vertical shaft. The first windmill was built in 644 or earlier, according to a 9th century record, because the man who assassinated the Caliph Omar in Medina's mosque that year was a Persian builder of windmills. However, there are conflicting reports as well. Windmills also first appeared in Europe in the 12th century. There is a reference to one in France in 1180 and another in England a few years later. Because it is the time of the Crusades, the notion comes most likely from the Middle East. The upright sails of the 12th and 13th century European windmills are still recognized today. Simple gearing is required to convey power to the vertical shaft, which turns the millstones. They must also be able to turn 360 degrees so that the sail can face the wind. That's pretty much how humanity invented and popularized windmills. Coffee shops originated in the Middle East, where coffee was initially grown. According to historical records, coffee cafes first appeared in Mecca in the early 1500s or late 1400s. We don't know when the first one opened, but they were so prevalent in the early 1500s that Muslim clerics prohibited both coffee houses and coffee from 1512 to 1524. Their main concern was the political emotions voiced at coffee shops posed a danger to the incumbent rule. Coffee houses were mostly used for political events. Coffee establishments migrated from Mecca to Vienna in 1529, where sweeteners were first introduced to coffee. Later, in 1534, it spread to Damascus, and then in 1555, to Constantinople. 
The writings of Jean Chardin, a 17th century French traveler, are among the earliest European sources that describe coffee cafes. They describe coffee shops as locations for news, political commentary, innocent games, storytelling, and preaching from mullahs or moral teachers. His depictions of coffee shops are frantic, with everything going on at the same time. There are numerous conundrums surrounding the invention of eyeglasses. According to some sources, the first wearable pair of glasses was invented in the 13th century in Italy. Salvino d'Armate most likely invented eyeglasses in 1285, while some sources claim an earlier date. He shared his new device's creation with Alessandro della Spina, an Italian monk who publicized it and is widely credited with developing eyeglasses. Because opticians of the same time did not have the capabilities of making faultless lenses in glass, the first spectacles were featured frames made from metal or bone and lenses made of quartz. Venetian artisans created discs for the eyes in the 14th century. Because they resembled lentil beans in shape, Italians named these finely round glass discs lenses. The first lenses were convex with an outward bulge in the middle and were used to treat farsightedness. The Malatestiana Library, also known as the Malatesta Novello Library, is a public library in the northern Italy city of Cecina. It is important for being the first civic library in Europe, belonging to the commune rather than the church or a noble family and available to the general public. And it was erected from 1447 to 1452 and opened in 1454. It was named after the local lord Malatesta Novello. The library is of such historical importance that it was inscribed with a new UNESCO's Memory of the World Register in 2005. The Flying Buttress evolved from earlier, simpler, hidden supports during the Gothic period. The design improved the buttress's supporting ability and allowed for construction of high-ceilinged churches typical of Gothic architecture. The apse at the Benedictine Abbey of Saint Germain des Prés in Paris appears to have the very first and certainly the oldest surviving Gothic flying buttresses. The original Romanesque church was modified to include a semicircular arcade and a jutting apse in the choir, the western end of the cathedral where mass was sung, as well as where choirs would play later. The work was completed in 1162. However, flying buttresses were also utilized in late antique, early Christian churches and tombs such as San Vitale and Ravenna, Italy, and earlier, as early as the 4th century CE. We just don't know whether any mason, clergymen, or other individuals who traveled to Ravenna or elsewhere passed on knowledge of this procedure, or even the principle of it. They were not used in the Romanesque style that dominated Western Europe from Charlemagne's period until the 12th century. China invented paper money during the Tang Dynasty, which ruled from 618 to 907, and they utilized it for a long period before it spread to other countries. In fact, when the famed traveler Marco Polo visited China between 1275 and 1292, he found paper money so intriguing that he dedicated a whole chapter to it in his book. The Chinese, being astute business people, found the weight of coin money to be inconvenient and reasoned that printed money would be more efficient. It also makes sense given that China originated paper and printing. When merchants began leaving heavy coins behind with a trustworthy agent who would write on paper how much money had been placed as a deposit, paper money was born. This was most likely also the birth of banking. Now before we reveal that last mind-blowing invention, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for more videos just like this one. It is thought that the astrolabe originated in ancient Greece. Though no specimens have remained, Hipparchus is credited with discovering stereographic projection, the mathematical way of putting the 3D sky onto a 2D plate as the foundation of how the astrolabe works. This was around 150 BCE. While the astrolabe may have originated in Greece, it is widely accepted that the design was developed in the Islamic world. Indeed, the name astrolabe comes from the Arabic equivalent of the Greek term star holder. Astrolabes were useful instruments in astronomy, navigation, and surveying since they could measure the distance between two objects. These gadgets were eventually superseded by more modern inventions, but the concepts underlying the astrolabe have remained significant in science and technology. So which invention surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Till next time.